For the chapter six homework, for question one, we have predict the product, draw the mechanism, and name the product in the following reaction. I always like to start with the mechanism. Um, it gives me an idea of what that product is going to be. So here we have an alkene. Here we have HBr, so we have a strong acid. My nucleophile is my electrons in the double bond. My electrophile is my hydrogen. We're going to do a proton transfer reaction. And when these electrons attack that hydrogen, to make that bond, first of all, these electrons are going to go to sit on the conjugate base. But we're going to end up with an intermediate. And the question is, for this double bond, since we're attached to both this hydrogen here and this hydrogen here, where do I actually put that hydrogen? Well, we always want to form the more stable carbocation. So here's what I don't want to do, is put the hydrogen there because that gives us that carbocation, which is a secondary carbocation. What I do want to do is put that hydrogen here on this carbon. So I could draw, I don't want to draw one of them because if I draw one, I need to draw both and that wouldn't be helpful. But I basically put the hydrogen here, which means my plus charge is now on this carbon. So this is my tertiary carbocation intermediate. Now we have a nucleophile, we have bromine that can attack. And keep in mind that now that we have this carbocation here, this is planar. So bromine can come in from the front or the back. So if I were to make a stereocenter by attacking that carbocation with bromine, I'd have to draw both products. So I'd have to draw the product with the R stereocenter and the product with the S stereocenter. However, since we're not making a stereocenter, since we have two methyl groups attached to this carbon, it's not a stereocenter anyway. So it's not crucial to specify that in this case. So bromine is going to attack that carbocation intermediate to give us our product. Which is that compound and we are also asked to name this product. So here we have carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon three, four, and five. So we have pentane, and we have a methyl and a bromine at the two position. So this is two bromo, two methyl pentane. All right, so we have predicted the product, we've drawn the product, we drew the mechanism, and we named the product. Um, the order that I went is draw the mechanism. I always like to draw the mechanism first, basically see what's happening with proton transfer, see if rearrangement is possible. So in this case, rearrangement doesn't help. We already had a tertiary carbocation intermediate, so rearrangement wouldn't stabilize anything. Um, and then look at what our nucleophile is and how that can attack, whether it can attack from the um, front or the back or both and what our resulting products would be and then finally we name the product All right for this it says name the starting material and predict the product so for this we have a one two three four carbon chain and we have an alkyne um, For numbering I would start so alkyne the triple bond aspect is part of the parent name So that means carbon number one is here carbon two is there three is there and four is there so this is 1-butyne or butyne-1-ine or just simply butyne. And notice that Y right there. So if we have an alkane, so no double bonds or triple bonds, that's an A. If we have an alkene, if this was a double bond, this would be an E. And since it's a triple bond, we have a Y. So that Y represents the triple bond for our butyne. Um, for this reaction, we have excess HBr. So we're going to have the electrons in the p orbital of our alkyne attack that proton. Now, you weren't asked for the mechanism, so you could just draw the product for this. And once you get comfortable with it, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but for this, we might as well look at what our intermediates are. All right, so we have a... actually a double bond now. So we use one of these, the electrons in this p orbital attack the hydrogen on HBr. So now we go from a triple bond to a double bond. So we lost one of those bonds. So I'm gonna draw this at 120 degrees now. Um, and also we have a carbocation intermediate. So we have a plus charge on 
this carbon. We did have one hydrogen here. Now we have two hydrogens there on our terminal carbon. So now our Br minus can come in and attack that to stabilize that, which gives us our next intermediate, which is that compound there. Now we need to do the same thing again. So now we're going to add HBr and our alkene is going to attack that proton. Our electrons are going to move to the bromine. That is going to give us... Now we don't have our alkene anymore. We use those electrons to attack that proton. I'm going to put the proton on the terminal carbon. That way the plus charge can be on this carbon here. This plus charge is stabilized with resonance and it's on the more substituted carbon um, there. So that's definitely the more stable carbocation intermediate. And now we also have Br minus as a side product. So we can go ahead and attack our carbocation with that Br minus giving us this final product. So we've got two Br groups attached. Um, if we were to name this product, might as well do a little extra here. So we have two bromine groups at the two position of our butane. So this is two, two dibromo butane. For the next, predict the product and draw the mechanism of the following reaction. Again, I like to start with the mechanism. So if we have an acid, just like up here where we had HBr, and in the first problem where we also had HBr, since we have an acid, we're going to use our electrons and our alkene as our nucleophile and protonate that. And we are going to put the proton somewhere so that we make the most stable carbocation intermediate as possible. So my two options for the proton are right here, which would put the plus charge right here, or we could put the proton right here, which would put the plus charge right here. Tertiary is more stable than secondary, so I'm definitely going to put the plus charge there, and the proton is now here. So this is our intermediate for that. Now we have water. So water in this case is going to act as a nucleophile. So our H2O is going to do a nucleophilic attack on that carbocation intermediate to get us to almost our product where now we have a methyl group there and an OH2 plus there. For the final product, we need an alcohol functional group. So this is too unstable as long as we're not in its conditions that are too acidic. So if we did a basic workup on this, we could deprotonate that. Or even if we just simply only had a pH of slightly less than 7 to give us some of our um, H plus ions in solution, that would be enough so that we could get to our final product. So we use water as our weak base to deprotonate that, which gives us our final product, which then we have a methyl and an alcohol functional group. Again, this is not a stereo center. We have two of the same things attached, so CH2, CH2, and then on the next carbon, CH2 equals the CH2 there, and then we end up meeting at the middle in that CH2. So this, again, is not a stereo center, um, if you were asked to name that. All right, for the next one, convert 2-butyne to cis-2-butene. So for 2-butyne, I would go ahead and draw my triple bond at carbon number 2. And right now I have 1, 2, 3 carbons. I need one more. So that compound there is 2-butyne. And we need to convert that to cis-2-butene. So I'm going to start with carbon number one. I've got my alkene at carbon number two. And this is a cis alkene. So I need one more carbon to make my butene. And it's cis, so my methyl groups are on the same side of the alkene. So for this, if I were to 
I've got a couple different options of reagents to use to reduce this. All of them involve hydrogen, so H2 gas. And in this case, if we want to stop at our alkene, we need to basically add something so that our H2 doesn't fully react with this, and it's hard to just add one equivalent of a gas. So we need to use Lindelar's catalyst in this case. So that is the answer for that one. And for five, propose a mechanism for the following reaction. So here we have our alkene. Um, it looks like a lot of different stuff is happening. We've got two methyl groups on this carbon here. It looks like we only have one methyl group on that carbon here, so that methyl group somehow moved to this carbon over here. Um, for our reaction, we've got our alkene. We're going to take that proton. Now we're going to put that proton on one of these two carbons, and both of them are the same, so it's hard to guess which one to put it on. But based on the fact that I see that one of these methyl groups moved, I'm going to guess there was a 1-2 methyl shift which means that for one of these methyls to move here, that is where the plus charge needs to be, which means I need to put the hydrogen on that carbon there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that intermediate. Got cyclohexane. I'm going to put my hydrogen here. So I had one hydrogen there, here, and now I've got two hydrogens there. My plus charge is on that carbon, and I still have my two methyl groups there. That puts me in a good situation so that I can do the 1-2 methyl shift. That stabilizes that carbocation intermediate, so that methyl shift is going to happen. So even if this product wasn't drawn, you could, based on reasoning, say that something is going to stabilize that carbocation if it can. We can do a 1-2 methyl shift so it can. So this would be the expected product that you would draw if you were just simply given these starting materials. All right, for the 1,2 methyl shift then, once we do that, that puts the one methyl group on that carbon. That carbon there lost electrons, which is why it has the plus charge, and we moved our methyl group down there. That carbon no longer has the positive charge because we moved electrons to it to stabilize that positive charge. Now we've got water that can come in. To get us to our next intermediate which now we have water with a plus charge there. We still have our methyl group there. We still have our methyl group there. And we just need a weak base like water to deprotonate one of those hydrogens to give us our final product. So the resulting product is that. Once we deprotonate that, so now we have an alcohol functional group we have a carbon there, and we have a carbon there. Now, one thing to note is we actually have two different stereocenters on this compound. However, there's nothing, it's not like we're doing a backside attack for an SN2 reaction, so we probably have a mix of all possible, um, of all possible stereocenters for both this one and this one. So this would have four different stereoisomers all of those would be possible, and we would actually form all of those different stereoisomers if we went this reaction route. And this is the only reaction route we can go based on um, conditions and reagents that we have. So if I were to ask you to name this, um, I would probably say something about the fact that it is not stereospecific, so don't worry about assigning stereocenters on those two.